Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We are finally getting back to Elmer's engine number two. What we're going to be working on today is the pistons. These will be made out of uh, brass round rod. Uh, they are a quarter inch in diameter, an uh, inch and a sixteenth long. So let's just jump right to it, head over to the lathe, and get to work. Now we got a piece of brass chucked up in the lathe. This is stock that's oversized. That way I can take it down to the final dimension. Now, for the most part, in most of the things that I do using a set of calipers is good enough. However, these need to be pretty precise, so I'm going to be using my brown and sharp digital micrometer. Now, we're not going to use the micrometers to take it down to the final dimension. We're just going to use it to get pretty close. And then we'll use the cylinder itself to take it down to the size it needs to be. We'll slip the cylinder over the piston, cover the port, and then pull it. If you hear a pop, then you know you have a good fit of the piston to the cylinder. Now I've already made a facing pass on the end. Now we're going to go ahead and take it down to the final dimension. All right, we're currently within ten thousandths of the final dimension. From here, we'll start trying to test fit it with the cylinder. Uh, we're right at the final dimension, but it's still a little tight on the cylinder. So what we'll do from here on is I'll use a piece of green Scotch-Brite to take it down until it fits the cylinder. Yeah, we got it down to the final dimension. Um, I can't get the piston in far enough to get the good pop sound so I have a cylinder that I have yet to finish if I stick that one on there there's a little bit of vacuum and you hear that pop when you hear that pop that means you know you have a good fit now let's get set up for the next operation now what we're going to do now is essentially make the connecting rod. Now there's several ways to go about making these pistons. Um, you can drill and tap uh, each end of the piston and then make a rod to connect them. However, I'm choosing to do it as a one piece construction. And so what we're going to do is use the grooving tool to create this recess inside. So I've already got the tool set. It's 3 sixteenths of an inch from the end to create this part that connects to the connecting rod. And then we're going to traverse towards the uh, chuck 473 thousandths. And then that'll create this recess and leave us the 5 sixteenths on the end for the piston. Now ideally, because this is sticking out so far, you would want to use a center um, to hold it. I'm choosing not to. Um, I'm just going to take it slow and everything should be all right. So as I said, we're going to traverse 473 thousandths towards the chuck and we're going to go to a total depth of 150 thousandths.
right, so here we should be left with 3 16 of an inch. And then the piston, I have enough room for 5 16 of an inch. So when you're making these cuts with the grooving tool, you just take it slow since it's unsupported from the end. This rod in the middle gets pretty thin down to about uh, 330 seconds, I believe. So if you just take it slow and don't try and plunge too fast because then your work will grab and then you'll ruin it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the edges with file. Then I'm going to pull it out a little bit and then I'll part it off. We'll flip it around and then cut it down to the final length. Now we'll turn it back, turn it around in the chuck, and then we'll face it down to the final length. And right, now I don't have a set of soft jaws for this chuck, so I just have the piston wrapped in a piece of paper to keep from marring it. So we'll stick that in there. Snug it down. We'll put the right tool in. Alright, we're looking for a total length of an inch and a sixteenth. You can see we're at 1.0855. So we've got about 23 thousandths to take off. Alright, so we have 23 thousandths that we need to take off the end. But when I took it out of the chuck, I lost my zero. Now you've seen me do this before. I did it with a feeler gauge. Uh, this time I'm just going to use a piece of paper. A piece of paper is four thousandths. This particular piece of paper is four thousandths. So you just run it up until you feel a little resistance between the tool and the paper. You can use a combination of the carriage and the cross slide to get the right feel. And that feels about right, right there. So we'll back our tool out of the way. We'll move our carriage gauge over. So we'll first move it the four thousandths for the thickness of the paper. And then we'll make the 23 thousandths in two passes. As I said before, we're looking for an inch and a sixteenth. And we are right on the money. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is creating these flats on either side of the par portion that connects to the crank. Now we need to trim it each side down so that we get a 3 16 width. And this being a quarter inch uh, piston, we need to take uh, roughly 31 thousandths off of each side to create the 3 16 width. Now, this dimension isn't overly critical, so I'm just, I've just butted the work up against the tool or the cutter. I've zeroed my carriage uh, dial, and then we'll move it in uh, 31 thousandths, and we'll take it all in one pass. And now we need to flip it over. And you see we made the one flat there. Okay, I got the part flipped around. I've got a parallel up against the flat that we just cut. Now, 
we're going to do the same thing. All I'm going to do is butt the work up against the mill cutter. I'm going to set zero on my carriage dial. Then I'll move in 31 thousandths. And we'll take the cut on that side. Now we have the flat on that side and then the flat on that side. Now this dimension, as I said before, is not overly critical, but we were shooting for 3 16 of an inch, which is 1875. We're at 1825 and that is good enough. All right, here's the pistons mostly finished up. The only thing left to do, uh, which I'm not going to show on camera, is to drill the hole for the connecting pin on the crank. Uh, I'm not going to show that because that's stuff you've already seen me do before. You just take an edge finder, find the edge, get your center, drill an eighth inch hole for the connecting pin. Another thing that's on the plans that I am not going to do is the oil grooves. Uh, the plans call for having oil grooves uh, on the piston. Um, I'm not going to be running this motor on live steam, so having those oil grooves really isn't going to make much, isn't going to help all that much. Just a little bit of 3 in 1 oil in with the piston will be good enough. If you plan on building this engine and running it on live steam, then oil grooves might be something to consider. Anyway, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.